does niacin work or not? You hear folks that are selling supplements saying, oh yes, niacin works, but, um, and then guys on the internet. Um, but here's a guy on the internet, um, <clears throat> Aim High Falls Short on Niacin Debate. It's on YouTube. It was July 6, 2012. He was actually the author of the key study that doctors quote to say niacin doesn't work. <clears throat> he said, basically, I'm afraid doctors are going to, cardiologists are going to see this the results of our study in the New England Journal, Aim High says that niacin didn't work, and they're going to quit prescribing niacin, and that would be a mistake. He was right. They did see the study. They did quit prescribing niacin, and it is a mistake. Now, we're going to go into some more detail on, uh, on this study, why it was a mistake, um, and basically some of the key focus points around the niacin debate. This is part two of a series on it. Now, I'll, I'll describe other videos in the series a little bit later. But this is the first study. This is his study. Niacin in patients with low HDL cholesterol levels receiving intensive statin therapy. New England Journal, uh, 2011. And again, we're still being impacted by the results of that study. Now, um, <clears throat> AIM High, the, uh, the M in AIM High, these uh, names are always uh, acronyms. The M in AIM High stands for metabolic syndrome. So there's a couple of things to think about here before we even get into this study. We're talking about metabolic syndrome patients. We're talking about low HDL. Why would they have a low HDL? We've got several videos. You've seen them before. Uh, triglyceride over HDL ratio in people with high blood sugar metabolic syndrome. Um, if your blood sugar is high, your HDL drops, your triglycerides increase because insulin stops your body from burning insulin, I mean from burning uh, triglycerides, and it burns up HDL while it is... Um, while insulin is active. So <clears throat> given that, my view of these studies and this study is very obvious right up front. Uh, and it gets back to what you've heard John say. He's lived it. He's, um, and I've lived it. Uh, we both continue to put this out in our videos. You cannot supplement away a bad lifestyle. So that was the goal, with, and that's what happened with the um, AIM High studies. Basically, they took people that had metabolic syndrome, they had low HDL, they had been on statins for several years, and they were wondering if adding uh, niacin would further help. It didn't. Here's another point to remember about the AIM High study. Not only did the study group get niacin, the control group got a very small amount of niacin. Why would they give the control group in the AIM High study niacin? Well, here's the reason. As we all know, you can get um, flushing with niacin. So <clears throat> in order to uh, keep the patients, the, the study subjects, from understanding that they had niacin. They gave them just enough to cause a cutaneous flush. Well, was that just enough to have an impact? Hmm, could have been. Here's another interesting question about, um, about the AIM High study. They, um, they stopped the study after just a couple of years and the perspective on, there's tons, of, there's tons of research that shows that niacin works, but it's more of a 10-year type of impact. They stopped this study after, what, 36 months? So even if they were going to have a significant niacin effect, they would not have seen it at this point. So again, there's several reasons why the AIM High study um, just brings up a lot of questions and why docs... Um, 
should dig a little bit deeper before they just start quoting a single study and um, and changing their practice based on it. In fact, one, one good idea would be to listen to the editorial of the guy that wrote the study. Maybe you wouldn't change your practice so quickly and maybe you wouldn't misinterpret the article so quickly. But again, we're all busy. I understand why that happens. Thank you very much for your interest.